Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to morning prayer. Today, 14 September. Today is the Holy Cross Day, and I will read a little trivia concerning Holy Cross from the Lesser Feast and Fast. Our readings are Numbers 21, 4 to 9, John 3. 11 to 17, the psalm is number 66, and for the colic we'll use colic for Holy Cross Day. The historian Eusebius, in his life on Constantine, tells how the emperor ordered the creation of a complex of buildings in Jerusalem on the scale of imperial magnificence to set forth as an object of attraction and veneration to all. The blessed place of our Savior's resurrection. 
the overall supervision of the work on the site where the Church of the Holy Sepulchre now stands, was entrusted to Constantine's mother, Empress Helena. In Jesus' time, the hill of Calvary had stood outside the city, but when the Roman city was succe succeeded Jerusalem, Elia Capuchina, Capotilina, was built. The hill was buried under tons of fill. It was during the excavation directed by, by Helena of the relic believed a relic believed to be the true cross was discovered. Constantine shrines included two principal buildings, a large basilica used for the liturgy, liturgy of the word, and a secular church known as the resurrection, its altar placed on the site of the tomb, which was used for liturgy of the table and for the singing of the daily office. Towards one side of the country yard, which was separated two buildings, and though it was, it, it was though which, through which, sorry, the faithful had to pass on their way to, from, and from word to sacrament. The exposed top of Calvary Hill was visible. It was there that the solemn veneration of the cross took place on Good Friday. And it was there the congregation gathered daily for the final prayer and dismissal after Vespers. Just a, a little information on the origin of Holy Cross Day. We continue with our morning prayer with the opening sentence on page 32 and then on to 35 and continuing. Through Jesus, let us continually offer up to God a sacrifice of praise that is a tribute of lips which acknowledge his name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are to life. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer your worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Christ our Passover. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once and for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourself, therefore, as death to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has also come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is number 66. 
appointed Psalm number 66. Be joyful in God, all you lands. Sing the glory of his name. Sing the glory of his praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds, because your great strength, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bow down before you, sings to you, sings out your name. Come now and see the works of God, how wonderful he is in his doing towards all people. He turned the sea into dry land, so that they went th through the water on foot, and there rejoice in him. In his might he rules forever, his eye keep watch over the nation. Let no rebel rise up against him. Bless our God, you peoples. Make the voice of his praise to be heard, who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip. For you, O God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, which I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifice of fat beasts with smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I, if I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his love from me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Numbers. A reading from the book of Numbers, chapter 21, beginning at verse 4 and on to 9. From Angkor, they set out by way of the Red Sea to go around the land to Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water. We detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And when the serpent bit someone, the person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue with the Benedictus. Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, 
You promise of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you saw to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet in the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our second reading is from the Gospel of John. A reading from the Holy Gospel of John, chapter 3, beginning at verse 11 and on to 17. Jesus continued, Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so, brother, I thank you for this. Brothers and sisters, I thank you for this opportunity to share my thoughts with you on the gospel reading. I pray that someone will be edified. I do so in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's gospel reading takes us into a conversation in progress between Jesus and Nicodemus. He came, he had visited Jesus by night, Nicodemus was a Pharisee, a ruler of the Jewish people, and was recognized as one of their teachers. It is speculated that he came to Jesus for guidance and instruction. The fact that he came to Jesus by night gives some credibility to the claim that he did not want to be seen going to Jesus, particularly for guidance and for instruction. Jesus was not accepted by most of the Jewish people. Nicodemus, because of his political status, was careful not to injure his political image by seeming to consort with one known to speak against the policies of the state. The Lord, however, recognizing Nicodemus a genuine, genuine desire to know the truth, to know the truth, unlike some of the Pharisees. His nocturnal visit to Jesus may have been to enable him to return to his people with additional learning. You see, he was aware of his inadequacy and sought assistance. When Nicodemus came to Jesus, he did recognize and acknowledge Jesus as teacher who came from God, and he admitted this by saying, for no one can do the signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus replied to Nicodemus, had him a bit confused. Jesus told him, Truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. But Nicodemus 
took this literally and inquired of Jesus, How can anyone be born after having grown old? He further explained his confused state by saying, by questioning, Can one enter a second time into a mother's womb and be born again? Here we can see how difficult it would be for one to comprehend matters pertaining to the kingdom of heaven with their mind firmly fixed on earthly understanding. Nicodemus was, he was here demonstrating the inability of the average mind to fathom divine things. He was thinking about new birth as, physical, as a physical event and not as not one of a spiritual nature. Jesus in response to the questions told Nicodemus assertively that no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. Here Jesus emphasized that the physical birth is not enough. There must also be spiritual birth if one is to enter the kingdom of heaven. Some commentators express the view that Jesus' mention of water referred to baptism. But Jesus further explained that what is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. That is to say, the children born of human parents are not without sin, and are powerless to save themselves by themselves. On the other hand, when a, when a spiritual birth takes place, and a person trusts in the Lord, that person is born again, not n born again now through the Spirit, receiving this new, receiving a new nature. The recipient is now fit for the kingdom of heaven. To reassure Nicodemus, Jesus told him that he should not be ast astonished that he told him, "You must be born from above." Jesus, then Jesus illustrated to Nicodemus that new birth is very much, is very much like the wind. It takes place according to the will of God and man has no power over it. Also new birth is impossible while you, also new birth is invisible, sorry, while you cannot see it. You can see the results of, of people's life. New birth is unpredictable and it is not possible to just to see where it will take place, just as the wind. It was against this background that Nicodemus' inability to understand spiritual truths that Jesus chided him for being a teacher of Israel, yet lack understanding of spiritual matters. The Lord then emphasized the flawlessness of his teachings. He told Nicodemus that he knew of truthfulness, he knew of the truthfulness in his teaching, for he testified to what he has seen, and yet the Jewish authority did not accept his teachings. Jesus then blamed Nicodemus uh, inability to believe heavenly things on his refusal to believe earthly things which Jesus told him about. Again, returning to matters of the kingdom, Jesus told Nicodemus that no one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, that is the Son of Man. Here Jesus was undoubtedly speaking of himself. He came from God, came from heaven, and would return to heaven in his time. This is not to be confused with those who would have died in Christ and would ascend. He alone came from God and would return to him on completion of his mission of salvation. Jesus then gave an example of how it was possible to have eternal life. He explained that just as Moses had lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Now in the book of Numbers, chapter 21, we read how Moses was instructed to make a serpent. 
and he made a set of serpent of bronze and fitted it to a pole. The Israelites, being bitten by the poisonous serpents, needed only to look at the serpent on the pool and they were miraculously cured. And so it is that those who lift up Jesus by faith and look to him will be saved, cured of their sins and assured of eternal life. Then Jesus spoke to Nicodemus. He spoke to Nicodemus what became probably the best known verse in the Bible. He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that the one who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. My friends, this is our promise. This is our hope. This is our faith. This is our belief. Jesus further stated that indeed God did not send his son into the, into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved by him. This statement speaks of God not as a harsh, punitive father just waiting to punish his children. Rather, he is pictures as a God of tenderness and compassion, eager to save anyone who believes in his son. My friends, Nicodemus went to Jesus by night to receive Jesus' glorious light. May we be so enlightened as we continue our walk to the Father, guided by the glorious light of His Son. The Lord be with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah.
We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. By way of intercession, we continue to pray fervently for our world still going through the traumas of the virus. And we hope that God will put a hand and bring an end to the suffering. We pray against the numerous wars that are taking place in the world. We pray against the harshness of the heart of men that love would abide and that the wars will subside. We pray for the Anglican Church worldwide. We pray for the well-being of the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Most Reverend Justin Welby. We pray for our Provincial Archbishop, the Most Reverend Howard Gregory, and for our Diocesan Bishop, the Right Reverend Claude Berkeley. We pray for the retired bishops, Calvin, Roland Clark that God will continue to bless them. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, today we pray for Holy Cross Marabella. Pray for the right Reverend Calvin Bess, Reverend Mark Samuel. We also pray for the healing ministry. In our own parish of St. Mary, we pray for the parish priest, Reverend Father Anders Maxwell for his assistance and for, for his assistance, Reverend Father Titus Akbarali, Reverend Presbyter Pontiflec Andre, we pray for the deacons, Deacon Finley and Deacon Fanfare, Deacon Mark Haynes and myself. We also pray for the laity, for all those who labor in this vineyard, doing the work so faithfully required in the parish. Remember our, re our former rector, Canon Gemmet, Canon Gemmet Hazelwood. Pray that God will continue to bless him now in his golden years. We bring before God the five congregations in the parish at Oropoon, St. Philip's Lopino, the Church of the Transfiguration, Maloney, St. Aidan's and St. Mary's. We pray that God will continue to assist us as we meet in person and that the congregation will indeed flourish under His care. We, can, we pray for those who have passed in the hope that he will receive the rest, receive the rest afforded by our Father. We continue with the suffrages, suffrage A. Lord, reveal your love among us, 
that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations and teach our leaders wisdom in our church with faithfulness and the servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend the Lord the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. Amen. We continue with our colleague. Collect, collect for Holy Cross, Holy Cross Day, found on page 188. Collect for Holy Cross Day, found on page 188. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. Mercifully grant that we mercifully grant that we who glory in the mystery of our redemption may have grace to take up our cross and follow him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. We turn to page forty five. Continuing. Into your hands, Lord, we commend ourselves this day. Let your presence breathe us this close. Strengthen us to remember that in whatever good works we do, we are serving you. Give us a diligent and watchful spirit, that we may seek in everything to know your will, and knowing it, may gladly perform it to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue now with a prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our path, a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now go in peace and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.